All right, let's have the debate that I feel like happens a lot. TJ Watt, Miles Garrett. Who's the better edge rusher? Well, let's decide it right here, right now. Uh, let's start off with some Miles Garrett tape. This is the great two play sequence that I just loved from Miles Garrett. So, first, gotta talk about the competition, who you're going up against. It's Akeem Aguanyu, who, you know, uh, I think actually had a pretty solid season for Carolina, but definitely got off to a slow start. This is week one where he definitely struggled. And again, uh, part of that might just be going up against Miles Garrett. But still, uh, you're going to see Garrett really, uh, you know, take advantage on this first play. Watch how right when this play begins, you see how Garrett has the speed uh, to sort of get by Iquanyu. And Iquanyu cannot get the hand placement he wants. Again, Rookie playing his first game, but I have to say, Garrett has done this to veterans and rookies alike. He definitely has that explosiveness right off the line that maybe you don't expect from someone who's as big as he is. This is part of why he went first over overall, is because very few players have had that size, strength, and speed all in one package, which is what makes him, again, one of the best players in the NFL. Both these guys we're talking about are some of the best players in the NFL. For Iguanyu, what can he do? Okay, he's not going to get his left arm all the way over to Garrett's right side of his body. In fact, he's struggling to get his left arm on Garrett, period. So what, do you, what, what can you do here? What's the way you could potentially salvage this? Well, if you get your right arm kind of on Garrett's hip and just sort of push him behind your quarterback, it should give your quarterback enough time to throw unless he holds on to it for a while. Uh, so that's kind of the, the way you can maybe salvage this. Instead, he barely bumps Garrett back. Garrett ends up clobbering poor Baker Mayfield on that play to former teammates, and he's able to get a sack. So, okay, good play. You know, yes, kind of weak competition, but still, uh, Garrett did his job. But the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I love what happens on the very next play. So here we go. All right, we just saw our rookie tackle get walloped uh, by Miles Garrett. Really have a hard time on that play. Okay, let's get some help in. Let's just, you know, get someone to chip Garrett, which means that you have another player who's on the line here for Carolina. He's going to start off just, you know, get in Garrett's way a little bit, make it more difficult for Garrett to get around Iquanyu. That's what he's going to try and do here. Uh, and then, you know, then he runs around. Okay, sure, makes sense. Let's do it. Watch how right when this play begins. Okay, you know, got in his way a little bit. Didn't do a ton, but hey, every little bit helps right here. Iguanyu is in sort of position, but still his left arm can't quite get as far over as he would like to against Miles Garrett. But again, hey, Iguanyu, one of the things he's known for is his strength, right? He has his right arm on Garrett's left shoulder pad, and no matter how raw you are uh, in the, at the NFL level, strength is strength, and he should be able to still push Garrett aside a little bit, right? Again, no, not really. Garrett is able to still go over and knock the ball out. The reality is, if you're an offensive line with a weakness, I don't care if you try to help out that weak offensive lineman, Garrett is still going to find a way to come through and make a play. But what about TJ Watt? Let's go over to him for a second. One of the things I want to talk about with TJ Watt before we even get into any, uh, you know, a pass rushing stuff is I've only seen this. I want to say I've never seen this before. It's not true. I've seen this from one other player before, and I'll talk about that player in just a second. But first, you see where Watt is on the screen. Joe Burrow is going to take the snap, and you see how Watt, you know, very quickly, what he's doing is he's watching Burrow. He's watching the quarterback. He doesn't just play the, you know, the tackle he's going up against. And you know how they say the true elite players in the league just see the game differently. They see more of what's going on. That's certainly the case with uh, TJ Watt. Burrow tries to make this throw, and Watt's able to jump up and nearly get the interception. I feel like there's only one player I've ever seen do as good of a job at getting their hand on the football as, an, uh, as a defensive lineman, and that would be his brother, J.J. Watt. I don't know what it is and why the Watts are seemingly so good at that. Maybe Derek Watt could do it too if he didn't play fullback. I don't know. Uh, but they're you know incredible at doing this, and it is... It's a vision thing just as much as it is a reflexes thing. And I want to go over here because it's not just that kind of stuff. It's not just finding a way to get your hand on the ball. Because listen, plenty of guys are able to knock the ball away. I don't know if they do it at the same level that the Watts do, but they're still able to knock the ball away. But I don't know how many people, if any people, I've seen consistently do this. In fact, I, I, I legitimately mean this. Only two players I've seen do this in a way that makes me feel like it's skill and not just luck. 
Watch how Joe Burrow again decides to throw the ball in that direction. And P.J. Watt jumps up and intercepts the football. He does this. This is just like a thing that he can bring to the table is he can literally jump up and catch a pass. And again, the only other guy I've ever seen do that in my lifetime is his brother, J.J. Watt. So it's crazy that those two guys seemingly have not just the reflexes to do that, but also the awareness to do it, to, to know where to, you know, uh, how to get into the passing lanes and make something like that happen. And it's truly incredible. And again, going over here, obviously he is a monster in the pass rush game as well. And this is going to be an example right here where it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup on this play. So again, you know, want to see how you guys can do against one-on-one -on -one matchups, right? How can you basically force other teams to double team you? That's that's the goal here. And the guy he's going up against, uh, Leo Collins, who again, has had some good years. This year was not one of them, but still. As you see, Burrow takes the snap, and T.J. Watt in this spot. Look at his hands, and this is definitely a way that T.J. Watt wins. Is a lot of with his hands. He's an incredible technician. He currently has his right arm kind of on Leo Collins' right side of his body, and he's going to just, just pull right here. Watch him pull Collins over. He's able to get over and get to Burrow for a sack. The reality is these guys are both so incredible at so many different things that I think just watching the tape, what you're going to do is you're going to just be consistently wowed by these guys. But what else can we do to determine maybe which one is better? Because, again, it's a great rivalry, right? You got one hand. The Steelers and the Browns already are division rivals. You now have the two edge rushers for them uh, who, you know, are both drafted in the same draft, one a late first, the other first overall. Uh, which one is better? Well, let's maybe compare some numbers. So these are their numbers. And first, I have to explain what the four stats you're looking at on the screen are. Uh, you know, pressures, sacks, pro football focus pass rush grade, and pro football focus run defense grade. The uh, pressures and sacks, I wanted to make it fair. They haven't played the exact same number of snaps, although it's been close. So I just did their per 1,000 uh, you know, pressures and sack numbers. And you see the first category, TJ Watt actually out pressures uh, the, uh, the opposing players as opposing to Miles Garrett. Uh, both are incredible statistics, but on average, TJ Watt uh, gets 45.7 uh, pressures per 1,000 snaps, which is around a season. It's a good season. It's a season if you play basically every snap for your team, which these guys won healthy do. Miles Garrett's also a very impressive 43.0, but Garrett actually has the slight edge when it comes to sacks. His is 14.6, whereas Watt is 14.4. Now, there's some debate as to what matters more, getting more pressures consistently or more sacks consistently. Uh, you know, a lot of people feel like if you get a sack or don't get a sack, there's a ton of flukiness involved there. Although I do wonder if, given the sample size now of being, you know, in the league for six years, how much does that flukiness kind of even out over a bigger sample size? I just don't know. The reality is, though, these are nearly identical numbers. I mean, uh, a 2.7 uh, pressure added per, you know, season is not a lot, and a 0 0.2 added sack per season is not a ton. The only real differences, the major differences on the stat sheet would be the PFF grades on, on both sides. You have Miles Garrett, who has consistently posted a much better pro football focus pass rush grade than TJ Watt has. So they're a bigger fan of T of Miles Garrett and feel like he more consistently uh, wins, even if it's not necessarily with just pure getting pressures, but just in general, more consistently accomplishes what he's trying to accomplish, which that's what a PFF grade is attempting to do. Grade, how often do you accomplish what you're trying to accomplish? Uh, but in the run defense grade, they give the edge to TJ Watt by a pretty significant margin, by about six and a half points there. So there's definitely arguments on both sides. I would also throw in, again, what I've talked about in this video, the batted passes and the interceptions, not to mention TJ Watt legitimately just plays coverage a decent amount, uh, whereas Miles Garrett doesn't really do that. I'm not saying it happens a ton or anything, but, you know, again, Watt is a bit more versatile, versatile, I should say. So that's another thing to point at. Which player is better? You can legitimately argue either one, and you're not wrong for arguing either one. But I can't sit on the fence here. I can't say, I don't know. Uh, I have to give, uh, you know, a, 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 an opinion somewhere. I think I'll give the slight edge to TJ Watt just because I like that he does more than just 
purely rush the passer. I do value run defense a lot higher than I think other people do at that position. So I'll give a slight edge to TJ Watt for his other stuff, but I think Miles Garrett is the better pass rusher just as a pure pass rusher from what I watched on tape and the numbers and, you know, uh, everything in between. Those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.